If you're thinking of taking the leap and starting your own online clothing shop, let's take a look at some of the things you may need to consider and some tips on how to make sure you are providing the best user experience for your prospective customers. Welcome to EKM's How to Create a Great Online Clothing Shop. Hi, I'm Mike from the marketing team here at the UK's number one e-commerce platform, EKM. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the big players in fashion e-commerce and some examples of smaller traders who are just getting things right. Let's also take in some aspects of sites that don't seem to quite work and how we think they could be improved. Our mantra here at EKM is do something you love. So make sure you are all in and this is something that you really want to do as there's going to be a lot to learn along the way, but it's going to be hugely rewarding. Right, let's get started. Oh, and by the way, if you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe for more great tips for your e-commerce website, where we'll be going more in depth about marketing your online clothing store. So first up is to think of your brand. How do you want to portray who you are and have a think about who are your main customers. Now, this may differ if you are creating and selling the products yourself or selling on products from other suppliers. If you're selling products that you've made yourself, then it's important to think whether your logo works on your products should you use it on labels. By this stage, you may already have your brand name and logo, but just a few tips. Keep logos clean, easy to adapt, and try to avoid any small elements or intricate pictures. Whilst we know we may not have the marketing resources that companies like Nike or ASOS do, a great way to think about a really future-proof and effective logo is to think, is it recognizable if you take elements away? As they and many of the large brands have done this in the past. Other important elements about your brand is to make sure that you also take into consideration a color palette and a font type. You may have a primary font that is used maybe within your logo and headings, then another font that is more legible for body text. Colours are also extremely important in reflecting the mood of your brand and or your products. A good idea would be to pick a main colour palette and then some complementary colours that you may want to switch up depending on the time of year or what the page you have created is showing. Right, to your website. Your homepage is incredibly important in grabbing the attention of your customers. When users arrive on your website, you want to make sure they don't bounce. That's a term for users that leave and return to whichever source brought them to your website after only looking at one page. Studies have shown that it can take just 50 milliseconds for a user to build an opinion of your website. That's the same as the blink of an eye or the amount of time I'll flick this picture of my dog Peaches on the screen. Cute. Studies from Kinesis claim that 75% of consumers judge a business's credibility on its web design, and 94% of first impressions of websites are based on its design. For all the great marketing and social media content you might create, it would be such a shame to lose those acquisitions if the bread and butter of your website doesn't look trustworthy. Quality of imagery is vital to reflect your professionalism as a brand and to do your products justice. Large hero images are very much the go-to to achieve this. This single image again helps to give that overall feel of your brand, but perhaps also showcase your best-selling products. Be careful if you want to use a carousel. These can be difficult to navigate on mobile, so it's advised not to use them on responsive mobile versions of your sites. The slides should auto-rotate, but not too quickly, especially if they include text, and auto-rotation should temporarily pause while hovered over. Below this would be a great place to put some featured products. This could be items that reflect current trends or items that you would particularly like to showcase. How you present these is up to you, but it could be nice opportunity to show some more casual photography you may have at your disposal that can inspire your customers into maybe taking a look at products they weren't necessarily in the hunt for. Be careful of trying to squeeze every single product you have onto your homepage. It will look cluttered and like you've not given too much critical thought to it. Imagine walking down a high street and seeing a shop front with a big pile of clothes in the front window. It wouldn't be a great look. Much like a physical store considers a route around the shop in which it would like customers to travel, a website is very much the same in regards to its information architecture and needs a clear navigation menu so users can find exactly where they want to go. This leads us on to navigation. 
If you're looking to sell both men and women's clothing, it may be a good idea to create dedicated landing pages for each. This has become increasingly popular in recent years as it allows nice clear navigation for users straight from the get-go and to cater your homepage for a specific audience. You may wonder why many websites look the same and follow a similar format. Well, that's because hours of behavioral data has been gathered to narrow down the most effective layouts of websites. A classic example of this is your navigation bar and its positioning. Users now instantly recognize the classic three lines that denote a menu, or the hamburger as it's also known, on mobile platforms and automatically look for navigation bars at the top of a page. Some more minimalistic websites sometimes have their navigation at the side, However, this may not be the right approach for you, particularly if you are using a top hero image and wanting users to read and scroll down the page. Your demographic can hugely impact the different navigation items you wish to use. It's always advisable to have your main types of garment in the navigation bar, so if you're selling all sorts of items for someone's wardrobe, make sure you have the different categories for people to navigate t-shirts, trousers, dresses, shoes, and so on. But what you also may like to do is create categories by season, colour, or maybe, depending on the types of clothes you're selling, features such as material, occasions and brands. You may even categorise by a look or trend. After all, that's how ASOS began, as seen on screen, allowing people to shop the look of a certain celeb. This is where creating product bundles can really help, pairing items together so that people can buy a complete outfit or buy the item separately which in turn can help increase your average basket value. Product bundles is something we have recently launched on our EKM platform. Making sure you have quality images of your products is absolutely vital in maintaining trust in your website, but also in enticing your users to become paying customers. Make sure they are high resolution, so when hovered over, they zoom to a good quality, and if possible, show your products from multiple angles. After all, no one would buy something in a physical shop if you pointed to an item 30 feet away and said, do you fancy buying that without a closer, clearer look at it? Although it can be tempting to take pictures that customers have posted themselves wearing their purchases, I'd avoid using them as your actual product images as they are usually low quality and tend to be against complex, busy backgrounds. If you want to show off customers' photos, Maybe make a separate social or catwalk section of your website to show them off and to interact with social media. It has become more common to have a variety of backgrounds of product images in recent years, apart from the classic white background, nicely lit studio image. If you do want to add a little bit of personality or background into your product images, I would still recommend having at least a couple of shots of the product on a white background alongside them so customers can take a clear look at the product. If you're selling multiple colours of the same item, say a classic plain t-shirt, I'd advise not to use an image with all the different variations of the product on. Instead, make sure you list them as different variants of your product and attach the relevant picture so it shows when you click onto the product. Try and get as much information as possible about the product in the description. By this, I don't mean marketing talk complete with buzzwords, but rather good sizing guides, most importantly for me, how they fit washing and care instructions, info on the material, so it's, is it stretchy, is it viscose, is it transparent, or does it have any particular features around collars, seams, and so on. Salamander Shirts, one of our customers, does this absolutely brilliantly. Take a look at their website and see just how much detail they put into their product descriptions. So, your customers like the look of your website, they've successfully navigated around it easily, they love your products and feel confident enough to add an item to their basket. But it's not a done deal yet. The Baymard Institute has calculated that just under 70% of carts are abandoned and the abandonment rate is higher on mobile devices. That's why it's imperative throughout the whole design process to make sure your website looks the part on mobile devices and is as easy to navigate as it is on desktop. Mobile devices come with more distractions than desktop devices, but there are other key reasons that see users drop off at the point of purchase. The Baymard Institute has pinpointed five key reasons for cart abandonment. The first and most common reason is that customers find out extra charges like VAT or shipping. Make sure these are clearly displayed even before a customer gets to the checkout. 
This could be done on product pages or even better still with a banner on your homepage. Be upfront and if you offer free shipping, this can be a real pull for customers. The second reason is requiring your customers to have a user account with your website. Although forcing this is great for marketing purposes and gathering data, keeping track of repeat purchases, leave this sign up prompt until after the purchase as the added time it takes to make an account can put off users. The third reason is that the checkout process is too long. Try and make it as easy as possible for your customers to go through with the purchase. Features like postcode lookup services such as Fetchify can really help shorten the time taken for users to fill out details at the checkout. Social logins can also be a great way to shorten the amount of information a user needs to input. Don't forget to offer as many payment platforms as possible as well to make it easy for a user to choose how to pay. Unclear pricing is another reason that users abandon carts, so make sure you are pricing items correctly, but also make sure discount codes and e-gift cards work correctly and don't provide any further confusion if items are already marked down. The final reason is a common theme that we've discussed and that's that the user didn't trust the website. So make sure it looks professional and you carry out the key mantra that is to test, test, test. Always make sure your website is loading correctly, looks the part, and your information architecture makes it nice and easy to navigate around your site. Thanks for watching this quick overview on how to create a great online clothing shop. I hope this has been a good starting point for you. We've loads more in-depth tips on our channel for many of the items and features I've discussed on this video. And if you're thinking of starting your online business journey in clothing retail, make sure you're doing it with EKM.